Channel 8 News tonight with a new fascinating breakthrough on the Hourglass Discovery. Now we turn to Steve, who's been making some very good progress on the field of the Hourglass. Now, Steve, can you tell us about your design? Well, the, yeah, the, 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 some kid came up to me the other day and he asked me, he's like, do hourglasses always have to go so slow? And what if I lived on the moon? Would it go even slower? And if I lived on a black hole, would it go faster? And uh, I was intrigued by that question because I'd never thought about it before. And I just said, uh, I'm not really sure, but I think it might go the same. But then I thought, well, if you were in outer space and there was no gravity, then of course it wouldn't go down at all. So I thought, hmm, let's just do an experiment to mm -hmm. test it. Okay. So what is this contraption you have here? Well, so what I have here is I have a regular hour glass. It's got sand in the top chamber that's flowing down to the bottom chamber. And uh, I've tied this, this rope to it using uh, Ashley's Book of Knots, uh, knot right number, can't remember the number, but I think it was on page 228, the jug sling for anybody who's interested. Tied a jug sling around the neck of the hourglass. And the idea is that with this long piece of string, I can spin the hourglass into a centrifugal motion. And the centrifugal force can be much greater than the force of gravity. And it'll be testing whether or not it's, uh, a higher gravity makes the hourglass go faster. That's very fascinating. We'll have to try that out in one second. Now we'll be back. Join us again on Channel 8 News. Welcome back, and thanks for joining us. We've got our lab technician, Jesse, here, who's going to be manning the timer. So, Steve, how does your experiment work? Well, okay, so we have the uh, sand, the, the uh, hourglass is now, we've got all the sand on one side. What we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to flip it over, put it in the centrifuge, and we're going to do that for a certain amount of time. Jesse's going to time us, and then when, when we've done, say, 20 or 30 seconds, he'll tell us how long exactly that we did. Then we're going to flip it back over and see how long it takes the sand that we put into the upper chamber to get back down to the bottom chamber. Okay? So, you ready to start the timer? Yes. All right. We're all ready and ready? excited. All right. Go. Okay. So now the sand is flowing from the top to the bottom at regular gravitational speed. We're going to enhance gravity with the centrifuge for a few seconds. Very fascinating. All right. How long was that? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay. Oh, so wow. now that seems to have gone a lot faster. Let's see how long it takes to get the sand which we just shot up into this chamber to fall back down into this one without the enhanced centrifuge. Back after just 30 seconds and you can see there has not been a lot of progress. I'm going to sleep. And we're back at it again this time with 2 minutes and 15 seconds on the clock. As you can see, we're still not even done, even though the original time only took 30 seconds. And we'll be back soon when it's over. Or we'll get closer. And we're back again, this time at 2 minutes 40 seconds. And. Whoa, it's done. It's all done. Congratulations on your breakthrough discovery. And that's it tonight from New York.